Did you click on today's video wondering what are the three B's? Well, I'm not going to tell you, at least not yet, because I want to see if you can figure it out. So put your guesses in the comments and I'll let you know at the end of the video. What I will tell you is that this week I came up with 10 genuinely creative thrift flips that I think you're really going to like. So let's get started. I just discovered a free app that turns any photo into a watercolor print. But first, I painted a plastic thrift store frame with chalk paint because once it's painted, no one will know it's plastic. I also like to distress it with sandpaper just enough so it looks like real wood is showing through. Then I apply some clear wax to seal and protect the chalk paint. Now let's create some watercolor artwork. You'll need to download the free Waterlog app. Open the app, click on the camera icon, which will allow access to your camera and photo library. Choose the photo you want to convert to a watercolor. It will immediately turn it into a vibrant watercolor. There are several different color options. Just play around and see which one you like best. Then click on the arrow to save it to your photo roll. I printed out this pretty pink rose on cardstock and cut it to fit inside my plastic frame. Since the frame still looked really cheap on the back side, I cut a piece of pretty scrapbook paper to fit and used spray adhesive to attach it over the back. Then I just cut away any extra paper with a utility knife. You'll have to let me know if you're going to try this waterlog app. Have these two chunks of wood that had been part of the base of an old table and I wanted to use them to create some unique bookends. While rummaging through my wood scraps I also found two pieces cut from a two by six piece of lumber. To try to match the wood stain I brushed watered down antiquing wax on four sides of the two by sixes wiping away the excess with a paper towel. To attach the two pieces of wood together, I applied wood glue to the bottom of the two by sixes, and then I let them dry. Next, I downloaded pictures of two of my favorite authors and turned them into watercolor prints. Then I applied a warm filter to the Jane Austen picture to give it a more vintage appearance similar to the coloration of the Poe picture. Then I added quotes to the picture in Canva, but you could use any photo program that has a background remover. Finally, I sized and printed the pictures from the Print to Size app. I know this sounds complicated, but it literally took me five minutes to print out these pictures. I swear it's easier than it sounds. To decoupage the image to the wood, brush Mod Podge on the wood and on the back of the paper. Then adhere the paper, carefully smoothing out any wrinkles or air bubbles. Let the Mod Podge dry. Then use sandpaper along the edges to remove any excess paper and to create a natural looking edge. Finally, brush on a top coat of Mod Podge to seal and protect the paper. I also brush some antiquing wax to the cut edges of the table base pieces so that all the wood would be a consistent brown color.
For this next project, I pulled an old book from my stash that I know I will never read. I opened it near the center to a page that had some empty white space. I cut out an IOD floral rub on transfer from the Lover of Flowers package and used the enclosed plastic scraper to adhere it to the full page of text. Then I cut out a few lines of a poem from the same transfer package and adhered it to the white space. Next, unbeknownst to me, my camera turned off while I was hot gluing several individual flower and greenery stems into the book crease. I thought I might need to glue moss around the base of the stems for extra stability, but the hot glue alone was enough to hold everything in place, and I preferred the clean look. Don't you just love how it looks like the flowers are growing out of the book? Have you seen those art prints where it looks like a small animal is peeking out from a picture frame? Well, I think I have a fun way to recreate this idea. I removed the backing and art from a thrift store picture frame. And since the backing was really flimsy, I cut out a new one from a sturdier piece of cardboard. Then I traced around a lid and cut out a small hole in the center. For something different, I chose a vintage piece of wallpaper to cover the cardboard, adhering it with glue stick. I wanted the wallpaper over the small center hole to look torn, so using a utility knife, I cut some slits in the wallpaper and then tore each piece to the outer edge of that small circle. Let me tell you, it didn't tear easily. 1960s vinyl wallpaper was really well made. Next, I grabbed a thrift store resin bird and stuck its head and upper body through the hole. On the back side, I marked a line showing the section of the bird that needed to be removed. Resin doesn't break easily like ceramics, so I had to drill several holes along my line and then use pliers to break off small pieces until the bird's backside was mostly removed. And FYI, drilling into resin creates a lot of dust. I arranged the remaining bird section into the opening and hot glued it to the edge of the hole on the back side. To further attach the bird, I hot glued small strips of wallpaper to the bird and to the cardboard round. It's actually quite sturdy. To clean up the back side, I cut a cardboard circle from a soda box. This was sturdy enough not to tear on the rough edges of the resin, but flexible enough to bend over the back side of the bird. I hot glued the cardboard to the wood and then I added a sawtooth hanger that stuck out about the same distance on the back side as the bird. I loved this thrift store cast iron candle stand and wish I had two or three of them. Is it just me or does it look a little bit like a miniature bird bath? I like the look of chippy white paint on black iron. So I gave it two coats of white chalk paint, let it dry, and then distressed it with sandpaper. I cut a few stems off a Walmart lavender bush and joined them together 
by twisting some floral tape at the bottom of the stems. Then I used a little florist wire to attach the stems to the candle stand. To conceal the wire, I tied some lace ribbon around it. I took two thrifted ceramic birds that came with little clips attached, and I spray painted both the birds and the clips white. Although I could have glued the birds to the candle stand, I decided to just clip them on. That way in the future, I can take them off if I ever want to use this as a candle stand or maybe even a soap dish. I have had these two candle stands in my stash for a very long time. The tulips are super cute, but I just have never found a way to use them in my home. And the red ceramic candle stand is cracked. To create a textured paint, I mix some old brown paint with a tablespoon of salt wash, but you could also use baking soda or plaster of Paris. Then I brushed this thick paint onto both candle stands. It took a while to get into all of the crevices in the tulip petals. Once the paint was dry, I took it outside and gave it a few coats of a gold metallic spray paint. To join the two candle stands together, I applied E6000 adhesive to the rim of the ceramic candle stand and place the tulips on top and let it dry overnight. This vintage frame is another thing that I thrifted some time ago. One of the decorative flowers is missing, but I think it's still gorgeous. I had this crazy idea of adding the frame to a thrift store crate. It was almost the perfect size. The crate was just an inch or two too wide, but I thought I could cut down the crate to make it smaller. I removed the slats along one of the long sides and the two connecting wood corner braces. I marked a line about an inch in on both the side slats and along the wood bottom. Then I took it to the garage and used my jigsaw to cut along the line. But first, I had to trim off the brad nails so my jigsaw wouldn't catch on them. Once it was cut, I just reattached the corner braces to the end of the slats, but I left the side open. You'll see in a minute why I didn't reattach the long slats. I spray painted the crate black to act as a dark primer. Then I brushed on a coat of brown acrylic paint to match the frame. I cut out a piece of peel and stick wallpaper to use on the bottom of the crate. I had been saving this last little piece of William Morris wallpaper left over from the dresser makeover. I used a utility knife to cut off the extra wallpaper along the edges. Now to finish off the open side, I found the backing that I had previously removed from an old picture frame. It's sturdier than cardboard, but lighter and thinner than plywood. I cut two pieces one for the open side and another piece for the opposing side. I nailed them in place and painted them brown to match. Are you wondering what kind of Frankenstein box is she making? Well, I attached two rings to the back 
and I'm going to hang this on the wall to use as a small bookshelf. A viewer recently requested ideas for using bird cages, and I had this one that I had previously thrifted, and I thought I would give it an upgrade by attaching it to yet another thrift store candle stand. To make the candle stand a little sturdier, I added some brad nails through the base. Then I painted it with off-white chalk paint to match the bird cage. The birdcage was naturally distressed, so when the paint was dry, I used sandpaper to distress the candle stand, too. Before joining the two pieces together, I removed the plastic feet from the bottom of the birdcage. Then, using my nail gun, I nailed through the top of the candle stand into the base of the birdcage. And even though I used the shortest nails I could, they still went all the way through the base. So I cut off the ends of the nails as best I could and then covered them with a bit of wood putty. When the putty was dry, I sanded it smooth and painted it white. I also decided to add a ceramic bird to the top of the bird cage using a little E6000 glue to attach it. I wanted to put a candle inside the bird cage. But first, I wanted to dress it up with some pressed flowers. I arranged a few flowers on the candle, covered them with a piece of wax paper. Then, using my heat gun, I blew hot air over the flowers. This also works with a hair blow dryer. As the wax melts, the colors of the flowers get brighter, and that's when you want to stop. I repeated this process a few more times, adding a few flowers at a time. I also wanted to add a half sphere of greenery. So to make one, I sliced a styrofoam ball in half, cut apart the stems of a small greenery bush that I bought half off at Hobby Lobby, so it only cost $3. And I didn't even use all the stems because it was getting too full. Instead, I hot glued some moss around the bottom edge to cover up the styrofoam, and then I cut a small circle from a soda box and hot glued it to the bottom. I had a second candle stand, like the one I had used with the birdcage, and I thought I might as well go ahead and use it in a project too. This time, I hammered off the top piece of wood that held the candles. Then I took a small square tray from Dollar Tree. I love the scalloped edge on this one. I marked the center on the bottom of the tray, applied wood glue to the top of the candle stand, and then lined up the candle stand on top of the tray bottom. This tray is so lightweight that it doesn't need nails. However, I did apply some caulk in the gaps for a more finished look. A viewer recently commented that I paint everything green, so I spray painted this blue instead. I actually love both blue and green, but oddly enough, I really hate teal which is a combination of blue and green. Let me know in the comments, is there a particular color that you really dislike? As you can see, I applied a floral rub-on transfer to the candle stand and a few lines of a poem to the side of the tray. Both of these transfers were from IOD's Lover of Flowers package. The 
last time I was at Home Goods, I saw these birds on books. I'm not sure if they're bookends or tabletop decor. In any case, I thought I would make my own version, and you know I'm going to use real books. I thrifted two books that were very likely to end up in the landfill. Then I just nailed them together. I should have nailed them from the bottom so you couldn't see the nail hole. I wanted to paint the books, but I decided I didn't want to paint the page edges, so I taped them off first. Then I gave the books a couple coats of gold spray paint. I realized that I should have chosen a newer book to place on top, one with no design or markings. Since I didn't like how the top of the book looked, I decided to cover it up with a piece of peel-and-stick wallpaper left over from a recent bedroom makeover. I could have spray-painted a ceramic bird gold to match the books, like the ones at Home Goods, but instead I chose a glass bird with a small hole in the top, I guess for a very skinny candle. I pushed a little styrofoam in the hole and added a few florals and greenery stems. I did need to add some hot glue to make sure the stem stayed put because it was such a small piece of styrofoam. Finally, I hot glued the bird to the peel and stick wallpaper. Thank you so much for watching today. Did you guess the three B's were birds, books, and blossoms? If you enjoy thrift flips like these, here's another video I think you'll like. Thank you.